like this. Let's do this. Go to effects, under effects, click on effects, bring in a fusion comp. Click on it, right click on it and open it in fusion page. Bring in a text node, that's a text plus node. Let's drag that to the left viewer. Let's close this media pool. Type resolve. Let's change this to extra bold. Increase the size a wee bit, something like so. And let's bring in an image plane. We are going to bring in four image planes. Connect the text to all four. Now with this first one, let's drag that to the viewer here. Bring in a renderer 3D. Let's just put that at the end here. Bring in shift space bar, bring in a transform 3D. Put that at the end here, connect that here. Now for this transform 3D, just set the Z value to 1.321. I usually set this so it displays, because I don't want to use a camera node. So I just set the Z value to 1.321. It places the image that I'm going to put in perfectly. For the first image plane 3D, we're going to bring in a transform 3D node, shift space bar, bring in a bender 3D node, and we can con we bring in another transform 3D node. Let's move this back. Then after this, we bring in a merge 3D node. So we have transform, bender, transform, 3D, then merge 3D. We can bring this into the viewer here. Now for the bender 3D, we go to bender. We set this value to X and we set this to 90. So if we go to this, if we drag this out now, let's say we increase this to, let's say 1.2. See, it bends there, so we could just go here and pull that like so. So you'll see if I do this, it just comes like that. And if we bring this Merge 3D and connect it to this Transform 3D and drag this Renderer 3D to the left viewer, and we go to the Bender and do what we just did again, see, just peels off the screen. But you see, it doesn't go off completely, so I'm going to go here and um, add minus 0 0.1 and you see it's kind of off the screen i think minus 0 0.06 works too good so you'll see that if we now go in here and bring this in it just comes like so but you see that funny movement here to adjust it i'm going to have to be adjusting center to zero when this thing comes in so let's go to vendor 3d and let's animate away. Right click on the center, modify with anim curves. Go to modifiers, set the easing to the easing to none, then ease out to sign. Then for the scale, set it to it's it's 0 0.06 minus 0 0.06. I want it to go to zero, so it's going to be 0 0.06 here. And I want this to happen at the very beginning of this comp. So I'm just going to go here and pick like. Eight. The scale set it to eight. Let's go back to tools. This range here, I want it to just go like so. So I'm going to go to range, this one here. Right click on this, modify with anim curves. Go to modifiers. Now I want it to go from zero to one. So it's just from zero to one, which is perfect. Then the curve is in, set to none here, then yes, sign. So if we play it back, see that unfold like so so we have the makings of what we want but we want this thing now to happen like three more times so i'm just going to copy the transform copy this click here Control shift v Control shift v Control shift v you'll see why we have this transform nodes shortly i connect that up But for the Bender 3D node, I'm just going to make a copy and Control V to paste. 
so it's a separate node across board like so connect all that like so and then this transform 3d copy it and do Control shift v click there Control shift v click here Control shift v click here Control shift v connect that across now let me show you a little something so you see this transform if i bring it in this transform here here we have the angle the angle z the reason why i want to do this is so that I want this transform to be able to control how the bend happens. Let me show you what I mean. Let's pin this transform that we just picked here. Then the second transform, let's click on it. So this second transform we just clicked on. I'm just going to right click on the Z rotation, click on expression, pick with this and connect that to the Z rotation of, the, of this other transform. Now in front of it, I'll just go to the front of this and I'll put minus. So it, Whatever angle I pick here, you'll see what happens here now. If I go to this angle I pick, let's say I pick 23, this would be minus 23. But what now happens is if when this peel wants to come through, it peels in at that angle. So you can use this angle now to determine, you can even make it just come from the upper part, right? If I press enter, so if I click on there, you see it just peels in. So you get why I put the two transforms. Now let's unpin that. Let's go back to these. The image planes, they all sit on top of each other right now. So I need to stagger them up a little bit. So I'm just gonna go to the second image plane. Gonna go to transform and put this as 001. Gonna put this at um, 002 put this at um, 0 0.003 now one other thing we need to do it means have them have different colors let's bring in three background nodes and three now let's connect the text to this background node text to this other background node and, and the text to this background node connect the background node here to this this to that and this to that so now i can go to this background let's make this one blue let's go here click on blue click on here click on this let's make it red that's not really red but let's just move on and make this one a green okay now we want to now stagger the animation of the bender nodes. This first bender, I leave the modifiers. The second bender here, I'm going to go to modifiers. Now for each of the bender nodes, I will need the animation to finish a lot faster than the length of the animation. So I'm just going to go to this first bender, set this to 1.2, the scale to 1.2, and set that across board for all of them. Okay, then we go to the second bender. What I want to do now is I want to push it forward by a little bit. So I'm just going to set the time offset for the second bender here to 0.05. This other one here, set it to 0 0.10. So I'm just adding 0 0.05 to each of them. And this one will be 0 0.15. So if I go here and I merge all this like so, like so, like so. So this blue looks like, so it looks like when I was pasting this, I didn't paste it as an instance. You see it's not connected to this transform. So I'm just going to delete this, click on this transform, copy it, click on this bender 3D. I'm just going to click on this background and press Ctrl Shift V to paste an instance. And um, if we now drag this to the viewer, we have that. So if we go to this, we have this and we go to render 3D, bring that out. So if we play this back, we essentially have the animation all done properly. Let's give it a background. Let's go to media pool. I have this texture here that I just want to use. Bring in another background node. 
Now for this background, I just go here, pick four corner, pick this is white. Okay. Top right, pick blue. Bottom left, pick red. Then bottom right, let's pick green. Let's go here. Put this on top of that to create a merge. Let's drag that to the viewer. Now for this, let's bring in an ellipse node. Now for this ellipse node, I'm just going to feather the edge. Let's say 0 0.5. And then we invert that. Let's just drag this edge a little bit wider. So it's something like that. Then with this media in, I'm just going to put this on top of this, like so. And um, let's drag that to this viewer. And then for this merge, I'm just going to make this. The apply mode, let's just make it soft light. And then reduce the opacity of this black. So it's something like so. Now let's just put this. This render a node. Just drag all of these back. Drag this render a node connected to all of that. So we have this. Then you can to add a little bit of spice. You can just add a drop shadow in between here. Shift space bar drop shadow. Right click on shadow strength. Modify with anim curves. Right click on the drop distance modify with anim curves and also the blur right click on it modify with anim curves now for the blur i want it to happen twice as fast on the timeline and i want it to start at 0 0.35 then i want it to happen from one here and set this to minus 0.5 so you see i it just comes from here, then it becomes really solid. Now I think it's even too solid, something like so, something like that. Then I want also the drop shadow distance. I want this to be, let's say, 4 at the beginning, then let's go here and say 0 0.4. It's going to be minus, so it goes from here like that. Then we go to the shadow itself. I don't want it to show from the beginning. So I'm just going to go here and set this to, this one needs to be uh, two. I start from 0 0.35. Then the shadow opacity, the time scale set it to two and the time offset set it to 0 0.25. Sorry, I'm just speeding through this part because this is just a little jazz on the side for the effect we already done the effect then the scale to be the opacity will be from here to i don't want to be so opa opaque so i'm just going to 0 0.55 so it's kind of subtle so if we drag this connected to media out make it a single viewer let's play it back we have this beautiful thing And the good thing is you can just go to this transform and change the angle to probably 60. And if you go to the beginning and play it back, and this is all playing pretty smoothly. And then the shadow just applied, appears very softly. Go to the drop shadow, the drop shadow, go to modifiers, go here, set the curves to easing, then sign, Ease in, ease in none, then ease out sign, rough shadow, ease in, ease in none, then ease out sign. And um, then one other thing we need to do is we want the stuff to be zoomed in and zoom out. So just go to this zoom here, this here, and bring in the transform 3D node. Now for this transform 3D node, I'm going to right click on the Z value, modify with anim curves. I'm going to go to modifiers, set the value to one, and then the scale to minus one. 
Let's set the ease in to sign and um, let's then ease in to none, then ease out to sign. Then click and play what we've done. Now the zoom is too much, so I'm just going to go here and let's set it to 0 0.2 and this to minus 0 0.2. So it's just subtle. And we have the zoom and then you see that zoom. The draw shadow creates the illusion that's sitting on that plane. And that's it guys. Thank you for watching Straight to the Point. See you next time. Cheers.